Faith, groaning, success, and action. Oh, yeah. His bubbly battered chip shop card gets everyone around the dinner table. And pepper basser fillets. Fancy. Post workout pick me up. We've been perfecting fish for over 200 years so you can master meal times. The two areas I think have to have the most fidelity in terms of lighting are beauty commercials and food commercials. Because with we have an extraordinary ability as humans to spot slight shifts in colour in food and skin. And the reason for that is it's part of our kind of survival mechanism. So when people have slight yellow in their face, it indicates that they might have jaundice or something. So it's not someone you want to procreate with, do you know what I mean? So we're, we're hardwired when it comes to sexuality or to food consumption. We're hardwired to recognize simple shifts in color. Uh, so with food, for food to look appetizing, if you lit it under fluorescent lighting, for example, and had a massive green spike, it wouldn't look very appetizing. So the lighting for food is really important. So you want to have lights that are faithful. You want to get what's called continuous continuous spectral response lights, which um, you can get them in LED, but you've got to be very careful which manufacturer you get them from. Freestyle peanut flow. Over the top here, maybe a little bit three quarter back, something like that. And then a frame, an eight by four frame with like a four or a half dip on it. Four by four frame, freestyle. Freestyle over there. Uh, DLED uh, into the background, um, and then 25 by 25, uh, three. number three here, and a number four, 50 by 50 there. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Okay. And action. Oh, that was good. Yeah. When, so when production approached me, it wasn't actually four days. And this is one of the values of uh, being an experienced DOP, is what you can do is you can see things happening before it's too late. So what I knew is the client's going to be very conscious of how we like the food. At the time, we had the food shots combined with the main production, and I said to the producer, well, look, the food shots are gonna be a slow process because there's gonna be a lot of feedback. You're gonna have agency feedback and client feedback. So really, to have those in the body of the main shoot might be a mistake. Perhaps if you consider getting an extra day for the food, then we can have a reduced crew. And by having a reduced crew, obviously the production saves some money with that. Uh, and it allows us to have more time to do the bigger set pieces. So food is very specific lighting. Um, so you're looking at, basically, you want to make the food feel as alive as possible. And, a, a, and the way you do that is, I, I have a system that I use, and it's basically getting the right quality of side light that basically brings the food to life and gives the food modeling. And then creating the right amount of sheen on the food. So the two things I'm always thinking about is where the side light is and where the light is keying the food and you know how far around the front do I bring that to get the texture and the, the modeling of the food right and then where do I bounce the other sources from because I usually tend to use this one side light coming in and then I bounce it around with pieces of white card or silver card depending on what we're doing so it's really good to try and stay elegant with the lighting and to try and keep, stick to one kind of side source and then what I'm looking at is the reflections in the food from the backlight and how to kind of get the correct reflections in the food because too much reflection makes the food look really greasy and too little reflection Reflection makes the food look dead. <laughs> okay, so let's try 40 here. Yep, yeah, just gonna lens up there, boss. 40 inches there, James. Go. So I use Kino Flow lights and Dado. Dado because of the optics. Uh, Dado has the best optics. You know, I've experienced it has very clean optics. So when you're doing precision work, the optics become quite important. And the Kino Flow uh, have had 20 odd years uh, research in colour when it came to the fluorescent tube. So they have a bit of a head start when it comes to LED. So they're very good at uh, uh, faithful colour uh, rendition, which is essential for food to get food right. One of the most important things to remember is you can't light thin air, you need, you need a subject, you know. So when you're doing something, like if you're doing um, a scenario in a bedroom or something and you don't have anyone sat down on the bed, then it's really hard to light that effectively. You, need, you kind of want a stand-in usually, you know. So I usually ask for stand-ins or someone to stand in place so I can light someone or something. And with food, that's essential. So you have this line-up dish of food that you basically rough in your broad strokes of light. Well, actually with food, you try and finesse it as much with the line-up. So when the actual hero food dish comes in, you only have a very limited amount of time of it before the food starts going off. So what you have to do is you have to basically get your lights as close as possible, get the hero dish in and pretty much turn over straight away. 
So the line-up dish is really important to get that right, and for the home economist to get that line-up dish as close to the hero dish as possible, because then you can light that really perfectly, and then you know when the hero dish comes in, you're going to be ready to shoot straight away. I posted the set notes uh, breakdown of a McDonald's uh, burger shoot and one of the comments was, oh my god, you have so many stands there, it's like more stand you'd use for like in a full scale production. So the response to that was that that job we had different regions that we were shooting, so we had um, different stacks of burgers for different countries actually. So we had like a, you know, uh, I think we had a Jamaican stack and we had a French stack and we had a Swiss stack and we had all these different countries. And each country required a sort of certain lighting scenario. So in Jamaica we, we, we're using like a twilight beach scene. So it was the Swiss stack, it was going to be kind of a sunny afternoon under the shade of a tree kind of scene, you know. So we were speaking about the, the sort of lighting environments for each of these burgers and then we'd have to produce those over a, uh, over a day shoot. So we have to have all the different lighting instruments in to create those different shapes and textures of light. Uh, and so it looked like a forest of stands and it looked like quite a complex thing. Uh, and it was funny to hear the comment because to the layman, that just looks absurd. You know, why are you doing? You know, why? But when you come in, when you when you come to precision work like this, you do need uh, certain tools, and you need to do it in a certain way. And particularly, like I said, that when you're doing more than one uh, situation, you know, when you're doing different lighting situations, you want to give it variety. You know, yes, of course, you could just light with a soft light from the side, and you get you get quite half decent results of that. But what we were trying to do is we we're trying to kind of create more atmosphere of light, and to do that, we quite a lot of equipment. If you want to know more about lighting, go to my Instagram. Uh, we do a series called Set Notes where we break down all the lighting on the film set.